Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract, and we're in a data module. There's been a bunch of videos on data in HTML, collecting from an HTML form, submitting to uh, the server, where PHP will then put it into a database, MySQL, using MySQL I for protection and then return data back either through Ajax or through uh, showing a, a table of results, for instance. And now we're going to take a look at that data process on the canvas in Zim, where we've got a couple shapes here. And if I move the shapes around and hit refresh, oop, if I can hit the refresh button, they're in the same place. We've remembered it. Now we've done this before with local storage. So that was the very first video in the data, data videos of lesson nine, showed storing this with local storage on the user's computer. But this now is storing it on the database, which means if anybody else comes to this URL, uh, well, this URL is local at the moment, but we also have a version of it on the site. If anybody comes to that URL, they would see these shapes in the same position. So we can imagine us making a little collage here. Oh, look at our person. Is the person hiding? Yes, the person's hiding. Oh, well, whatever. So uh, they would be able to see uh, that, sh that combination of shapes right there. Neat, huh? And they would be able to change theirs, and then we would be able to see theirs. Now, it's not real-time multi-user. So as I move this shape, they don't see the shape moving on their computer. That would be sockets, and Zim has sockets. So you can go to zimjs.com, take a look at the code section, and down in the code section, there's a Zim, a Zim sockets link for you, and you can handle multi-user multi things like chats and avatars. Uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, but this is storing data so that somebody else could come back and see your collage, for instance, or whatever it is that you want them to see. Some of the things that are being made with that is this tower talk right here. Why don't we take a peek? Click a new tab there. So tower talk, this is a tower and people are talking in the tower. So we click on there and here's some, what would it be like? Uh, they're uh, talking, blah, 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 blah. So People are sharing information, and this is all done through Zim, even though this part of it is an HTML overlay to get selectable text on there. Uh, the rest of it in here where we can see the various rooms is, um, is Zim. Oh, the Love Shack. So come on in, put something in the Love Shack. Yeah, that's zimjs.com slash tower as an example of what's going on with the binding. Okay, and you can uh, come in and have a look at that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, well, let's close that one down. All right, so let's go into the code for the shapes. We're in a Zim template here with a Zim 10.9.0 at least to get the binding. A traditional Zim template. We have our rectangle and our circle. We've kind of gone through this code already back in the first video of lesson nine, whatever the number that was, 31, I think, uh, where we were doing basically the same thing. We had the shapes and we were storing to local storage. At that point, we would just bind, here we are binding the circle and binding the rectangle. I think that's all we needed to do and it just bound by default to local storage. But when you're dealing with the server, it's not instant. Local storage is on the user's computer, and we can save that data just like any step of the way we would save data in a, in a property. And the next step, we would be able to access that if we wanted to. But when we send to the server and receive from the server, it's 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 it takes time. It takes time to go to the server and come back. So we have these things called callback functions. They're like events in a sense that say, hey, uh, we send something, great, but when you receive the data back, we're going to let you know. So that's what we've got here is we create the bind. So this is our, our bind object. We're passing in the URL where we want to bind that. Now, if you use this type of get, then you can do this from your own computer here. Uh, if you use post, 
I think you're going to run into problems because post uses AJAX, get uses this thing called JSONP. So JSONP gets around security issues, where AJAX, I think you're going to need to run that on the server. So you'd have to, every time you make a change here locally, you'd have to upload it to the server and test it on the server. That becomes a little bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, sometimes people will have their servers locally and they can just test locally. It's not that hard to set up a server locally. You can look at things like XAMPP or... Uh, anyway, it's kind of beyond beyond the scope of this video how to set up a server, but some people do set up their own local servers and it's not too bad then. Uh, or you can do your testing using this get format. Why don't we come back to that in just a sec. I was explaining something else there and that is we set up the bind and then we have to uh, ask for some data from the server. So we need to get some data from the server to find out where our shapes are if somebody else has already moved the shapes. So, uh, or if we had already moved the shapes in a prior time. So we're asking for information from the server and we can't really do anything until we get that information now. So we're setting, this is a, called a callback function. Here it is. We could have, if we wanted, put an arrow function right in there. So there's an arrow function right in there or if you're not used to arrow functions yet, function round brackets, squiggly brackets in there. So we could have put our anonymous function in there as a callback. But what we've done is set, um, just called the init function. Or, well, we haven't quite called it yet. When we get data, it will call the init function. That's why there's no round brackets there. So be careful. Don't put the round brackets. That calls it right away. We won't be ready. So we're just telling from what the callback function is. And we're identifying it. And here it is, right here in this, this function. So once we get information from the server, then uh, we're able to, to carry on and bind our thing. So, so it's kind of uh, neat. As soon as we bind here, this binding will place the circle at whatever information came in with an ID of circ, and then the rectangle, whatever information came in with the ID of rect. Because this is how we're binding it now. And that's how we bound it in the past. That's how somebody else did the binding to those those these terms right here. That's why we have to put in these these IDs so that we can match other people's when when they do that. We can't just bind to a circle object because a circle object is local to this computer. The other other computers have no idea what that circle object is. So we're binding to the circle object, but we're using this ID right here to match up with other people's data. And indeed, that's the ID that we end up putting into the database as well for these things. Okay, so that's a lot of information to begin with, isn't it? Um, why don't we, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, why don't we just take a look through what we missed here then? So we're setting the type to get, and that can either be get or post. By the way, if we were to log that, let's do it. Zog, what color should we do? Red, uh, type, like so. And now I'm going to view this in a browser. Boop, boop, boop. I think this is the local one, yep. I refresh and F12 to see the console. There's the red and it is saying get. So that just is the little string get. It's the new Zim constant. You could, if you want to, put the little string get. But sometimes it's annoying to keep on putting that little string. So for very common things that don't change, like the word get, we're giving you a global sim constant get or post. Cute, huh? I think we dealt with get and post in the last videos, so we don't need to go too much into that. But the nice thing about get is that we can run it locally here without having to upload to the server. So uh, you would do that, and then when you're all done, you created it, it's all working, you just change this to the word post, post this up on the server, and you've got a more sort of secure and invisible way of handling things. Because if you use get on the server, um, sometimes you'll see these uh, variables up top in the, the URL. You probably don't want those. I think we explained that in the forum before. All right, so anyway, we're setting this back to get. 
we're not needing to comment there, and we come into our bind. So here's our connection to a shapes.php, and we provided, we're going to take a look through shapes.php as well. Um, by the way, now that I'm up here looking at this stuff, we also have the shapes comments. So we come into the shapes comments, there's information about all of this stuff. There's the information on get and post that we just mentioned. And we carry on and you can see that there's comments throughout this stuff. So that will be in the zip file, the comments page. You can always take a look at that. Same with the PHP. PHP has a shapes.php and then a shapes with comments uh, for the PHP as well. All right. So here's the bind. We're going off to that URL. We have worked out a system that works pretty well so that we don't have to worry if we're sending get and post. You see, on the server, we have to collect those variables either as, as get or post. So what we're doing is we're sending some information to the server of the type. And then on the server, we can dynamically say, oh, you know, we're, we're doing get or we're doing post. And we can work it out so that we don't have to keep on going to the server to make changes when we make changes right here. And that's unusual and it's very handy. So we'll see when we get to the server how we set that up. So this is us sending that information. Now note that information is being placed right on the URL. So that means it's going to be received as get because get is information on the URL. Post is not. So even if we use post here, when we receive this information on the server, we're going to ask for the get version of type because that, that's always get. And then from that point on, though, uh, well, you know, that's all in the server. We'll look at it then. That just, that's why we're putting this stuff right here. We also have to still set the bind type for the bind. By default, the bind type is local storage, although I think what happens is if it sees a URL, it says, ah, ha, 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 the bind type now will be post. So uh, if we want the bind type to be get, we need to put this in here to the bind type. So I would suggest just doing this each time, this system, it's really easy. And you don't have to worry about anything. You just change that value and it shows up here. And it shows up here. Nice, huh? Now the master is information that we send every single time we do a from or a to on our binding. If we move the shape and, and drop the shape, that sends information to the server saying where the shape is. The master will also be sent along with that. And we're using that as an ID that helps us, uh, for instance, if we wanted to, we could just start all over again with shapes two, and then we've got, we're working in a new new record in the database. We're gonna see that the master will determine which record we, we put this in, uh, or which ID. Um, so anyway, uh, it's, it's like a master ID at the moment. We don't always have to do that, but remember that tower talk that I showed you? It's really cool. We did the same thing with the tower talk. If I just change one little number, like if I say a tower talk two, then all of a sudden we've got a new tower with new data. And that's neat because maybe one day I would like to start a second tower. You know, or, or maybe you would want a tower for your uh, for your workplace or <laughs> for your friends. So the the system is is flexible like that, which is cool with one master ID. So that's what the master ID is is used for that type of thing. And we're asking to turn the reports on. By default, they don't turn on, so that's kind of neat when we. When we take a look there, let's do it. Here, here are the reports, these bind reports. Open that up. So, woo, there we go, almost <laughs> there. <laughs> so a bind report, this is saying that it created something with get. This is the URL it used, and that's the master key. Then there's another bind report that it added the circle with these, with these uh, properties, and it added the rectangle with those properties. And then there's a from, and this is the data that it got back in the from, and you can open up the from and see the data. So if you don't want to see these bind reports, that was our little uh, red version there. If you don't want to see your, the bind reports, you can turn turn those, those off. Well, actually, if you just say false or don't include this, this is what it would be like without the bind reports. 
No blind reports. <laughs> All right. You probably shouldn't release your, your app with the bind reports. And scrolling down, here's our bind from to get the initial data from anybody else. And by the way, when it's set up to be local storage, it does that automatically because it's free and instant. So automatically with local storage, it will just go get the, the data. And, but here we need to do the two-step process on the server. So we send off the from. We wait and get the information back, and we could collect the data here. Do we need to? I don't think we need to, but if we wanted to see what the data was, uh, it would show up much like it was in the report. Now, one thing to just watch out for. So if we zog and we'll zog it with blue, our data here, let's have a look. Let me refresh. There's the reports, and you see that we've got the data coming in before we even add and do those things. So uh, as soon as the from runs, uh, the, the bind report, uh, then, then here's our data. That's the data there. Now just uh, watch it, because if we ever make changes to the data later, like down, down below, we, there are these things called filters that we could change the data and, or modify, well, modify, change, <laughs> same thing, we could add to it, we could take away from it. If we ever do that, this version of what we've outputted may actually change as well. It's hooked up. So if we change later and come back and look at this, it may be changed. So you've got to watch that. Therefore, what we did is we created a bind.report, I think it is, just like that. And what that does is it will report the current data as a copy. So if we ever change it later, it won't change in your console. We found that really annoying and confusing when that happened. So we, we made a tool that allowed it. So here's the bind report right here, bind data. And it is showing you the data at this time. And even if you change it later on, it won't be updated here. So that's nice because it can show you the data that you actually received rather than <laughs> getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a neat little feature, the, the bind report, if uh, you want to find out your data at any time, do it that way. Oh, now we have our circle binding to the various IDs, and here are the properties that we're wanting to record. So you can go back to the very first video in the data thing to, if you want to know more about binding and the IDs and why we recorded those. We've already talked about that. Um, and then when we press ups, we're sending off our data. So both, in both cases, we're just binding it to like that. So we've combined it uh, as, a, as a function right here. Bind to is being sent. And what's nice about this, I don't know if you noticed, but basically all of this stuff right here, where we're binding, well, aside from the init, all of the stuff inside, that's the same as when we stored in local storage. This is the same if we post or if we get. So post, get, local storage, it's all the same code in here, which is uh, pretty cool. And then we end. So this is our, our client side right here. And I sort of wondered whether we do one video about all of this. Uh, we're sitting at 20 minutes. Mm, it's a tough one. I think it would probably be better if we split it now and come back and look. Well, you know what? Maybe not. Let's, let's just go and do it because the PHP side shouldn't be too different. And you can always put this on pause right now and go get a cookie. Would you like to go get a cookie? <laughs> Put it on pause, go get a cookie. You know, you'll be happy, all all fresh, and let's go take a look at the uh, the PHP side. <laughs> Could be trouble, who knows? So on the PHP side, we are setting up our database much like how it was with the HTML and what we've already gone through in the previous uh, videos, which is why we won't need to spend too much time here, I don't think. So our local host, username, password, database name, etc. We're grabbing ours from there. Uh, if we are sending back via, uh, now we haven't seen this, so I suppose this is important. If we are sending back via get, 
with the uh, with Zim Async. So uh, Zim, uh, the bind automatically is either going to use Zim Async for get, or it's going to use Zim Ajax for post. So if we're sending back via get, then we need this line right here to tell it, well, we don't have to have it, but you're going to get a warning in the console if you don't have this line. It'll say, hey, we've done this for you, but you should have said that you were going to be sending back JavaScript. And if you don't want to see that console warning, then you would put this header saying, we're going to be sending back JavaScript. <laughs> this is only for the get. Now, here we are collecting our type. So this is always on the get, as mentioned, so we're checking the get for the type. And if there is no uh, type provided, then we assume that it's get by default, uh, which is kind of interesting because I think our bind defaults to post. Mm, well, I don't think that'll matter. The get is something that we've added on top of what Zim is regularly doing to handle this. All right, so if the type is get, so if the type is get, then here's how we're going to collect our variables with get, get, get. Yay! If the type is post, otherwise, then we're going to collect the variables with master data, or sorry, with post, post, post. So a little bit annoying. It might have been nice to have just this in here. A little bit simpler looking. But this is how we handle both ways. I think in a, uh, a further example along the way, we're going to show you how we can simplify all this stuff into just an array and a loop. So if you happen to have more of these things, we can just do an array and a loop. So it becomes sort of like one line to handle these ones and one line to handle those ones. So uh, we'll see that in a future video. Okay, what are we collecting? We're collecting the master. We're collecting the data. Data gets sent automatically by Zimbind and so does a command. So the command is either going to be to or from, or there's also a command called to from, and I think those are the commands. Oh, and a delete command or a remove command, I think. Let me, let me see what that's called. Way down here at the bottom. Preview, remove all. There is a remove and a remove all. So we collect the commands, and if we're doing a two, then we want to put the data into the database. But if we don't have a master, so if there's no ID as to where we're going to put that, and the master's coming, that ID is coming from the master in this case, then we create a little error. And here is our test to find out how we send back this error. So we're going to echo. Uh, if the type this is a conditional right here, so you could go in brackets if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So if the type is get, then we're going to do what's after the uh, question mark, which is send this back. Otherwise, it's post. So if it's post, we just send back the JSON right like that. So if we wanted to, we could have stuck that right there. Uh, or if it was post, we know it's post, we could have just said echo this. But we're doing the two-step system, so in the case where it's get, we need to echo async dot callback to, and then whatever the stuff is. So this is how Zimbind works with the with the get. It's using async, zim async, zim async expects a callback function, and the callback function for two is called callback two. All right, that's hard-coded into the Zim bind. You've got to use that if you're calling back something from a two. And as a matter of fact, we also call back that down here, async callback two. Once we've inserted the stuff into the, the database, then we're going to send a callback. So this is if there's an error. This is if there's not an error. We'll come to that in just a second. Then. Seem good? And the nice thing about doing it with this system, with this, this version right here, is that we don't have to care. Uh, before, when we were building this, we had two different versions. We'd have to come in here and comment out one version if we changed to post from get. If we changed back to get, then we'd have to come in here and comment out the, the stuff for post. <laughs> you know, that's how we were going to launch it. We said, ah, you know, let's, let's tidy that up a little bit so that there's less work to do. So you can just copy this system and, and use that in your code as well. All right, that's if there's an error. If there's not an error, we're inserting into our table. 
Uh, let's pop to the table here. This is what the table looks like in PHP MyAdmin. Uh, one cool thing about bind is we don't have to worry about setting up uh, setting up table fields for the X and the Y and the level and whatever else it may be, the color and the shape and the blah, 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 blah. Um, we're just storing the whole JSON object from the bind need, and we're putting that at an ID. So basically we have an ID and we have the JSON data that we're collecting. The ID needs should be primary. Uh, it's not auto incrementing. We're actually using the ID from the bind, as, as we'll see in just a second. And then the JSON just gets put in there as string, as text. Okay, coming on back then. That was our table. We're inserting an ID in JSON. Both of these things, the ID and JSON, are coming from the client. They're coming from the user. So we want to set those as question marks here in our MySQL. Uh, this is SQL. We're putting them as question marks. Uh, this is a cool thing, too. If you're wanting to just um, either add a new thing if it isn't there, or update the thing if it is there. You see, we've got one ID, that being the master ID, what was that? Shapes, I think. So when, we, when we're inserting data here, we don't want to keep on making a new record. We want to actually update the old record if it's there. We want to insert it if it's new, or update it if it's not. So this is the MySQL way, or SQL way of doing that on duplicate key so it knows what the key is and we're passing in going to be the same ID shapes and shapes again and shapes again and then again and again so that's a duplicate key we're going to then update the JSON so we don't need to insert the key at that time we, we know there's already one there we're just going to update the JSON and because the JSON came from came from the client uh, we should put the question mark there because it might have bad code in it, bad code, bad code. And then we do our binding just like we did before. So uh, that's kind of cool. Master, data, and then data binding on, on that question mark right there. Data, data. So it looks a bit strange because of the double. However, you've got in the comments, uh, we mentioned that it looks a bit strange because of the double, but why, why we're doing it that way. Whoa, comments. Uh, don't you love these comments? Masters, database tables, oh goodness gracious, here it is. And there's the duplicate key. And uh, a little odd here as we're doing the two statements. Well, okay, so you've got the comments. Uh, you can read through those as well if you, if you forget. And like I said, though, this is basically the same as what we were doing on the HTML side. So go have a look at those videos. We'll talk talk you through the statement init and the prepare and the bind and what these things mean but all that stuff has been talked about already and so go back and take a look at that you can also go to the zim school lesson nine and see a whole bunch of you know textbook type information on what these things are and how they work and if we're successful, we're preparing a JSON sendback. Now that's one thing that we're doing here is uh, using JSON in our, our return results as well. And that allows us to ask for the data.success or data.error. If you wanted to, you could just return a string and just say, hey, when I get the data back, is the string equal to the string success? But we've decided to keep it uh, all JSON going back and forth. Okay, so there we are. We're doing the same little trick here where if it's get, we're using the the Zim uh, async version of the callback to, and otherwise we're just sending back the JSON if it's post. When we ask for data from the database, the command of from will, will happen. And again, if we don't have a master, we echo an error, but check our error out, call back from, not call back to. So that's something to just watch out for, a little twist there. If you're dealing with to, then you need to call the callback to. If you're dealing with from, then you need to call the callback from. If you're dealing with remove all, then you do the callback remove all. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, just, uh, it's necessary. All right, so the from, we're selecting 
the data from, and this is just so easy. We're selecting the JSON. All we need is the JSON, where the ID is equal to whatever. That would be shapes. But since it comes from the client, we need to bind it. So there we are binding. We then go and bind the result to a variable called JSON. We fetch to get the data from the database, and it will take the data and put it in our, our variable JSON. So if there isn't any JSON, there's no data, then we're going to prepare nothing to get sent back. And then we do the callback. So this is us sending the data back. That's why back in our HTML here, if we want, we can collect the data like so. The data will automatically, as we bind, the data will, will be applied. It will, um, it will, hey, say, I got some data, and it will actually take that data and apply it to these properties of our circle and our rectangle, which is why, uh, as we bind there, which is why those rectangle, the rectangle circle move to the, the right position, the position from the database that we're sending back right here, or here, if we change that to post. Otherwise, if we couldn't connect to this table for some reason, then we would, would uh, echo an error like so. If we wanted to clear that and remove all, you can just call bind.removeAll, and it would remove the data from the data by calling a delete from, from there. And then it uh, calls you back saying, hey, did we were successful or could we not do that? And that is what you need to call back. Okay, pretty cool, huh? So that is what is giving us these shapes that we can move around. And you see there's the report. Hey, look at the success. There's when we, when we send off the data, look at what we're getting. We're getting a success of true. So this is the data that is coming back. And we could capture that in the callback of the two if we so desired. So if, and I mean, that's not going to tell the user anything if there was a problem. So you could come back into here. And when we do the two right here, if we want, we can do a callback. Uh, I can't remember where the callback is, but it's just going to be call. We'll call an arrow function like that. Here's the data that we collect. If it's the arrow function, we only need that part of it. So we're going to the Zim Duo technique there. Sorry for the double, the double ones. Let's do it this way. Maybe you can see that a little bit better. So we've gone to the Zim Duo technique, asking for their or say, saying callback function is going to be this function right here. We're collecting the data in that function, and now check this out. We can uh, zog. What color do you want? Green. Hopefully it'll be green. Data dot success. Okay, uh, or we could ask for the data.error. So we save that up, and uh, where do we go? Where do we go? We refresh here, and I make a move, boop, right there, green, true. So that told us true, true, and there's another green. So if it weren't true, if something broke, then we could pop up a pane right here. We could pop up a pane and say, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> It didn't work. <laughs> Come back later. <laughs> tell tell the uh, tell whoever tell the creator it didn't work. <laughs> Neat. And that's that's your error checking type stuff. All right. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And once again, all these files are up on the server and or not up in this. Well, they are up in the server as a zip file. Uh, if they're not quite there yet, it's because we're still doing the videos and they'll be there soon. I am sure. And um, uh, so are you, you having fun here at the Creative Coding? All right, you're getting some data, some binding. Nice. Uh, so we look forward to having you back. I am Dr. Abstract. If you're still here and enjoying this, you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack and uh, talk to us there. We'd love to, to help you if you have any problems with this. Sometimes data can be very tricky. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.